Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the ways in which you can develop your slur technique. I'm also going to show you how you can apply this technique to help solve many other technical problems. Young students often come across slurs for the first time in pieces like this really rather beautiful Adagio by Steibelt. Now, it's quite a simple piece, but actually it's a great opportunity to teach the students a technique which will help them to solve many more complex problems later on. The key thing in playing two-note slurs is that the arm should come down to play the first note and lift while the second note is being played. This adds weight to the first note and lightens the touch on the second. I'll demonstrate this with the left hand so you can see more clearly. <clears throat> so here's our first note. Now as you lift your arm on the second note, your hand and wrist should be as relaxed as possible. This is a very important ingredient of your slur technique as it gives you a chance to prepare for the next notes with no build-up of tension and this is the clue to solving many of the more complex technical problems in piano playing. The more quickly you can relax, the better your technique will be, which may sound counterintuitive as re relaxing is not something we normally think of as doing fast, but your speed of playing depends largely on the speed of your relaxation. So set the hand and wrist position as you will want it with the first note. About here is good. It's no good starting with a high wrist as you will then have to bring your arm down to reach the second note rather than being able to lift it on the second note. And if you bring your hand down before playing the second note, you're introducing an extra movement. So you get one, two, three, instead of just one, two. So, play the first note. Now play the second note as you lift your arm. Don't play the second note and then lift your arm because first of all you won't have the benefit of lightening the touch as you play and secondly you will be adding an extra movement which will slow you down when you want to play faster. So you will be getting one, two, three instead of just one, two. To prepare for the next slur, lift your hand so that it is in the position you started with. There are two reasons for this. First of all, if you keep the high wrist position, you will play the first note of the next slur with a higher wrist, and you will then have to waste time lowering it before you can play the second note. And secondly, we are imitating what at speed will become partly a throw, where the inertia of the hand will make it flip back on the wrist as you bring the arm down, saving you an extra movement. So the arm will move down, but the hand will want to continue to rise. So... Of course, all these movements will be minimised as you play faster, but it's good to learn the coordination of the big movements at first. You can modify this technique in two different ways depending on the style and speed of the piece that you're playing. The first one is what I like to call arm touch, where you start with the wrist just a little bit higher than level, so that as your arm comes down and the wrist drops, the hand is pushed very slightly forward, the fingers are pushed forward into the key, adding quite a lot of power to them, so you get this It's important that your elbow stays in the same place while you're doing that, otherwise you lose anything that you've gained in the way of pushing forward. The second one is adding more power to the second note. If you want to slur with the second note louder, you push forward with your arm as you play the second note. Or you 
can even even your slurs up like that. On the surface, this looks pretty straightforward, really just going up and down the A major scale. But it's the repetition of the A's and E's which sometimes trip people up. So for this one, try not to think of the two A's at the top here as repeated notes. Instead, think of the first A as being at the end of a slur, and the second A is the beginning of the next stir. In string playing this would be the equivalent of a change of bow, the first A being at the end of one bow and the second A at the beginning of the next bow. So keep your wrist low as you approach the G-sharp and A, so that you can lift on the A. You can't lift what has already been lifted, so if you allowed your wrist to rise, This would happen, and you'd be stuck. So keep your wrist low, lift and relax as you play the A, reposition your wrist, and come down on the second A. This would work equally well, by the way, without a change of finger. I'm changing here only because I want to have my thumb on the E on the way down the scale. So the same thing happens with the E's on the way down. Keep your wrist low as you approach the thumb, lift and relax as you play the first E, reposition your wrist and come down with your fifth finger on the second E. A good exercise for practicing this could just be this. And as usual, as you get faster, the movements become minimalized. So So here you can see the melody in the middle, surrounded by figurations in both hands. Outlined are the notes which will benefit from slur technique. So in this piece the slurs are surrounded by other figurations, but the principle for playing them remains exactly the same. Bring your arm down on the A, and then keep it down with a minimum amount of weight so that your hand and arm can move freely to support the fingers, playing the accompanying figuration like this. Lifting a little on the last note to prepare for the next melody, note B. Come down on the B with your thumb. Raise your arm and relax as you play the next note, C. Reposition your wrist and prepare to play the next C and bring your arm down on it. Walk the weight to the B, hold it with a minimum weight so you can support the fingers as before, and so on. So you get this. Again, at speed, these movements will become much smaller and may be almost unnoticeable in performance.
So here we have a good example of Chopin's double note writing. As in the Mozart extract, it's the repetitions which can sometimes be a problem. It can be easy to see this as a series of chords which have to be played very fast. But if you group them in twos and play them with slow technique, you get two for the price of one, as it were. So, plays the first chord with an up movement, like the second note of a slur, with an instantly relaxed wrist. Reposition your wrist and bring your arm down to play the next chord, which we will treat as the first note of a two-note slur. Lift on the second chord, and so on. As this passage is not notated as two note slurs, but really should sound like even chords, I would strengthen the second chord of each pair by pushing it forward with my arm as I lift off. Like that. And also, because the passage is so strong and fiery, I'd like to use an arm touch on the first note, so the arm touch we talked about earlier on in this video. So we've got arm touch there. If you want to get very technical about it, your, your hand is really doing a kind of mini reverse circle like that. One of the first things we notice here is the apparently miraculous jumps for the fifth fingers and thumbs that Brahms seems to require. This is a series of four note broken chords, all of which can be treated as four note slurs. So we play the first three notes with a low wrist, lift and relax on the fourth note, reposition your wrist and come down on the beginning of the next one. see that I'm pushing forward on the last note of each slur as well. This is so that the piece will be loud enough to come right through the orchestra. If you are sufficiently relaxed during the lift, you will have no difficulty preparing for the next group of notes. The trick is to incorporate the sideways arm movement into the relax and lift. Relax and move. Remove. You will also need arm support on every note of this to make it come through. Generally, an active arm is needed throughout the whole of the passage. <laughs> 